Hi, and welcome to our full moon ritual. As I explained in some other videos, there is a slight difference between a ritual and a meditation. Uh, during a meditation, you're just in a flow of experiences. The experiences come into your consciousness and leave your consciousness. And by doing this, ultimately, your consciousness is also transformed, purified by having this flow of pure energy moving through it. In a ritual, however, we don't allow the energy to escape. We keep the energy kind of bottled up or contained to get more power, get more depth out of the experience. So in this full moon ritual, although it may sound very much like a meditation, I would like to ask you not to allow these energies to simply escape or evaporate out of your body, but instead of that, just build up layer after layer, slowly creating more and more energies. These types of rituals are actually best done in a group. Um, and I think the reason for that will become clear as I move on with the meditation, because as a group, we can attract and also harmonize energies much better than we can as an individual. So for this ritual, I would like to use the cup as a symbol. Often the moon is also depicted as a crescent, as a crescent, as a cup as well. And you have two types of cups, you could say, in ritualistic exercise. You have cups which are golden, which are basically cups of the spirit, of pure consciousness. And often these types of rituals are working more on the subconscious level. So they change things subtly in your spirit, in your karma. And as a result of that, things will go differently, you will see things differently. The effects are very profound, but very indirect. And you have the silver cup, which we will be working with today. The silver cup is very much about our incarnated consciousness, our emotions, our feelings, our intuition. And unlike the golden cup, which is in a way able to encompass all, the silver cup is also limited to our consciousness. So, but it's also the more practical cup, you could say. You could use it to do things in the now or with people who are around you or with your immediate surroundings. So it also helps us to manifest this more of an outward energy compared to the cup of gold. So I would like to visualize now to see yourself as a cup of silver and you yourself are a cup of silver but you're also part of a cup of silver the group you're performing the ritual with is a cup of silver the place you're performing your ritual in is also a cup of silver and the very earth even our solar system is a cup of silver. And depending on the degree of the cup, we are able to catch more subtle energy. So as an individual, we can capture some energies from the moon. As a group, we can feel more subtle energies from the moon. But if we involve the place, Energies are start to become really profound, more deep. We start to learn about our role in the bigger picture, our relationship to other. When we extend the cup to the entire earth, we start to realize our place on this planet, the role of mankind. If we extend it to our solar system, we can feel the higher powers, 
the angels, which are determining what role our solar system will play in the universe. And this is the power of ritual that we're able to extend beyond ourselves. But first, we need a solid basis to build upon. So we will start with our own personal cup. And the cup is like an antenna. Constantly there are signals, just like the air, the ether, it's full of all kinds of radio waves, microwaves, all kind of radiation. And spiritual energy is also a type of radiation. Just like your phone or your radio is attuned to one signal at a time and all others are filtered out. In the same way we also need to attune our bodies so that we can receive the impulse we are looking for instead of just a jumble of all the impulses around us. So we need to be able to attract the right impulse, to tune into it, but also to hold on to it, not to resist it. And this is the work of building the silver cup, the moon chalice, inside of yourself. So first go to your pelvis. And feel that your pelvis is like a channel. It's there to receive all kinds of energy. Energies from other people, energies from the cosmos, energies from previous incarnations, from ancestors. It is this chalice, the base of our spine we will use after transforming it. Because this chalice is the basis for the chalice of the heart and the chalice of the head. So you could say we have three chalices, each attuned to a different vibration. But if the basic chalice is not healthy, all other chalices will suffer. So we need to build from the bottom up and perfect the three chalices to catch the moon impulse. So first we start with the pelvis and try to feel that all your lives before this one can be quite of a, a bit of a jumble. It can be confusion. Try to feel the part of you which is idealistic, which is curious, which is motivated. And this is the force which drives you from one incarnation to the other, because you're searching, you're looking. And allow this force to select the parts of you which will be part of your chalice at this moment. Feel this driving force, this long willpower, guiding you through many lifetimes. Feel this power filling up your pelvic area. How everything which is dropped into your pelvic area is feeding that willpower, is feeding that desire for growth, for progress for evolution and do not deny yourself any lessons, any experiences, good or bad, which serve your evolution, which serve your progress, which serve the will of your spirit. Now when this cup is made whole, we move to the cup of the heart. To the cup of the heart, we gather smaller impulses, which are not on the grand scale of multiple lives, just about this life, 
this incarnation. All your friends, all your enemies, all the relations which you have, to everybody and everything on this planet are within your heart. Just like the pelvis, also the heart can be confused. Sometimes connections don't work out the way you expect them to. Sometimes you get attached and cannot separate the connection, which is no longer useful for you. Feel the desire of the heart to share. You wish to share yourself, but also to share in what others are sharing with you. You want to form a unity. You want to connect everything and everybody you care about in your heart. Allow yourself to do that without judgment, without agenda without thinking about your career or your self-interest. Just realize the connection you have and all the connections you have had and will have in your incarnation, and there are many. Too many for your consciousness, that is fine. Just let them flow out of your consciousness and form the chalice, form the cup. So that you can receive their impulses, so that they can share with you and you can understand them, you can feel them, and that the right people are invited. They feel they can share with you, there is room in your heart for them. Open your heart without judgment. And love the people who hurt you as much as the people who support you. But also be wise, feel what should be shared and what should not be shared. And let the poison drain out of you the cup of your heart. All the misguidance, all the self-interest, either from you or from others. Everything which is impure has to leave the silver chalice of the heart. Now focus on the chalice of the head. It is through the chalice of the head that we have the shortest time frame. We are really in the moment. And maybe we can look ahead for one season, but usually not more than that. More often, just a week or two, a month at most. And that is fine too, because that is the purpose of this chalice to be in the now, to work with what we are now, where we are now, what we need now. This is the chalice of guidance, for which we receive the guidance, which can also be called blessings. Of the spirits of the gods, the goddesses, the nature around us, of our ancestors, but even of the Supreme Being and the Holy Spirit. All these things come into this small cup if the other cups are healthy and pure. Let's now purify the cup of the head and free it from all distractions, from all worries, from all stress. Remove all the plans and schemes of your ego because the moon energy it's not about survival, it's about living, it's about growing, about moving from one cycle to the next, about letting go of what is no longer necessary and accepting what must be. To allow your head to open up to the possibility the inspiration without fear without desire merely wishing 
for your spirit to move. And this way you can connect to all the powers which want to move your spirit along, which want to help you on your path, on your way to the light. Feel that this should be the only motivation in this cup, that all other things are poison. Let the poison drain out of your head, out of your heart, out of your pelvis. Give it back to the world, give it back to the cosmos, give it back to the people who gave it to you. So that now all three cups can be joined together. And you yourself can become a silver cup, ready to receive the lunar impulse. The moon should respond to the impulse of the sun. The sun is your spirit. The moon is your energy body. Now that you have attuned and purified your energy body, it can listen to the voice of your spirit, asking the cosmos for its blessing. Close your eyes, and if you're in a group, join hands. Focus your thoughts on the moon, visualize the moon, if you cannot look at it directly. Allow all your cups to be filled. And if you feel that your cups are full, that you need some time to digest all that you're feeling, all that is happening with you, it is fine. If you're within a group, Join the hands of the people to your left and to your right and before you leave the circle, so the circle remains unbroken. This is the way to remove yourself, but also to enter back into the circle. Once you feel it is time for you to receive more guidance. Let all the other planetary influences, except for the sun, also come into your moon chalice, into your moon cup. So you will feel what to think, how to change yourself, how to change the world. What are the right occasions and moments? And what are things which are not good to do in the present time? place or nearby future. And get an awareness of the movement of your energy body in this world. It doesn't have to be crystal clear right now, but hold on to this energy and reconnect to the wisdom of the lunar impulse. Whenever you feel confused, you need to make a decision. We're filling our cup to last us for the coming months. Don't try to stabilize the energy or hold on to it longer than that. Because the lunar impulse is always cyclical, changing. But accept that. Except that you have to move, that you cannot stand still, and just like the moon and the water, you are flowing and running and moving, ups and downs. But every movement can be used by your spirit, both up or down. If you have something specific to ask, you may do so. Just continue this meditation for as long as you would like. 
I suggest staying in it for at least 20 minutes, at the most two hours, not to strain your energy body too much. thanks to the moon and to all other beings which are granting their blessings and their energy to you and feel your desire to share the blessings you have received with those around you and let everything which overflows from your cup flow into cups of the people around you so that the cascade begins with you doesn't end with you but ultimately through this action the entire universe is nurtured with the healing waters of the moon <laughs>